Well, I'm available to start at right tackle. You can't see when I have clothes on. Right. Well, there's not an even playing field. There's never been an even playing field. There never will be an even playing field. But... What shampoo do you use on your hair? You don't need to be Superman to play in this offense. You're listening to The Red Zone. Welcome, Badgers fans, to another episode of The Red Zone. We are here with one of our favorite guests, Zach Heilprin from The Zone. How you doing, Zach? Doing great, Jason. I, I've decided every time I start a podcast, I'm going to say one of our favorite guests. So, <laughs> hey, it, it works. That's what, I always do the same thing. Well, we uh, just got finished with a uh, a, a little bit warmer practice uh, on Tuesday than we had on Saturday. It was uh, not quite as miserable. I've never, yeah, I've been to Camp Randall so many times in my life, and. <laughs> Saturday was one of the coldest I've ever been. Yeah, it was rough. Um, but we don't have to come, according to Paul Chris. So. We don't, but we do anyways. <laughs> yeah. um, well, let's just go ahead and start with, you know, what everyone wants us to talk about, which is the quarterback position. Um, Jack Cohen's been, you know, nothing's really changed. Jack Cohen has been taking the majority of the reps and, and most of the first team reps. And, uh, you know, Graham Mertz, Danny Vandenboom, and Chase Wolf have been taking relatively equal second team reps. Um you know, we, we kind of got into a discussion um, amongst us in the media the other day about kind of the, the chances of, of you know, sort of Graham Mertz's chances of catching Cone or, or what his chances are of, of maybe making a making a run in the fall. I seem to be a little bit, maybe a little bit more optimistic than, than most that, that he at least has a chance to do that. Uh, how do you kind of see um, how Mertz has started off the spring so far and, and kind of how you see the quarterback position as a whole right now? Do you see a huge difference between the two? Like, those two, and just really in, in general, the four. I don't see, like, there's a huge, huge difference between between the four. And so, I do I think Graham Mertz will start? I think there's a chance. Um, it's clear that Jack Cohn, despite what they are saying to us, what they're telling us, that, that he's the number one right now. Their organizational chart has him uh, number one right now. They don't have a depth chart. But I, the way that Graham played on Sunday or on Saturday, and he was the last one to get reps in that scrimmage he was the last one to come up and yet first drive 98 yards right down the right down the field now we have to be fair they were running the ball a little bit better with him than they were uh i think it was 11 11 runs three passes yeah but yeah. three passes what, was 39 yards something like that either way we're allowed to say but <laughs> uh, excuse yeah sorry uh he he uh yes he completed all the passes that he threw on that drive uh but either way i just wouldn't what I'm saying is I think he was – that was probably his best. I thought that was the best he's looked this this uh, spring, the yeah. four practices, now five practices that we've gotten to see. Gotten to see. We got to see a little bit more of him today, and, uh, you know, it seemed like he got some of the second-team reps first before the other guys. I don't know how much to make out of that. What I'm saying is um, in terms of his physical abilities, mentally it seems like he's picking things up pretty quickly. John Budmeyer said as much today with the quarterback's coach. I think – he is. Got, he does have a shot, and I think he very well could be the guy come seven, what August thirtieth down in South Florida. I, I got a. I think I got a few of my listeners excited last podcast that I did with Jay Kokorowski uh, when I said that Mertz has a really good chance to be the best quarterback here since Russell Wilson. Um, now I, I do, should clarify that I, I did not mean that he was going to be that good this year. But, you know, I, I just meant at some point, you know, he, he's got a really good chance to be that good. Um, I do think Jack Cohn is still the favorite to start. I mean, I think it's pretty clear based on the reps he's getting that he is right now the guy. And, you know, I like you said, John Budmeyer said that Merce is picking things up pretty well. But, I mean, I, he's still not he's still not in position where he could he could start a game tomorrow and, and be okay, I don't I don't think. I mean, I think that – I think if they played a game tomorrow, I, on a, I actually think Vandenboom might go in before – Mertz for that reason. But. Well, I mean, if if uh, Jack Cohn could be out on the field telling him what the signals mean, <laughs> yeah. um, I think Graham Mertz could play. But otherwise, no. But that was the same thing with Jack. I remember Alex Honeybrook having to do that when Jack was a true freshman, having to go out there and tell him what yeah. the play <laughs> what the play was going to be. And Jack ended up being the backup quarterback that fall. Now he was battling Curry Lyles, who was a redshirt freshman at the time, so it wasn't like he had all this experience on him. But again, there's, there's nothing that stood out about uh, Jack Cohn that would say that He's definitely the best quarterback on this roster. It just reps right now. He's the number one quarterback, but I don't think there's anything that else that that is that could potentially keep Graham Mertz from winning the job. I, is there? Like, what's what would be, what would it be? I mean, he's well, going to learn the couple, offense. He, well, a couple things I think. Um, I I think if he's just if he's not quite there with the offense still by the fall, if he's still a little hesitant, 
if he's still, you know, getting some things wrong, or if Cone just kind of takes some more steps in fall camp and, and holds him off. I, I do think Cone has looked pretty good this spring. I mean, he's made the odd mistake here or there, but so is so is Mertz. And I, I think he looks a little better than he did um, when he was thrown in there last year as a starting quarter. I mean, it's a different in practice than in yeah. a game, but I, I, I think he's had a pretty good spring so far. So if he comes in the fall camp and, and, and plays better than we anticipate, you know, I'm, he, he's sure, certainly could hold off all challengers. I wouldn't be that surprised if that happened. But, yeah, no, I agree. I the, the thing that was interesting to me in talking in talking to John Budmeyer was John Budmeyer was the fact that he said Graham doesn't think when he throws, so he's not really he's not thinking out there. Like it's not like the mental aspect of the game doesn't seem too much for him, and so like he's just he's out there playing, and that I think that'll continue to grow. But two freshmen aren't supposed to do that. Jack Cohn didn't do that. Alex Hornibrook did a little bit. Oscar Fences yeah. did not do that. Like the, we've seen a ton of early enrollee quarterbacks here in the last five, six years at Wisconsin. And I know I asked Joe Rudolph if, you know, Graham was ahead of it and he didn't really comment on it, but I, <laughs> but I feel like Graham is yeah. ahead of, ahead of where other true freshman quarterback are coming in here. Guys that should still be in high school. I would definitely agree with that. I think that he, I think he's, we've seen five practices, which is, which is a pretty small sample size, sure. but you, you can tell already tell that he has the arm talent, uh, to, 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 to go out there he already has he can make every throw mm-hmm. um, and you know look I, there are still times where you know we saw today he just threw an awful interception to Leo Chanel uh, for the, a pick six Leo's but, got his yeah. number man because he, he, <laughs> he had the other pick six too against him earlier in the in, well, I think yeah. it was first scrimmage but it's not like he's the only quarterback making bad throws out there either no, so, not at all um, so you know I think that Again, I think he's got a chance how do you kind of I mean, if you had to predict right now how the quarterback depth chart shakes up come you know the end of august what what would sort of your because you seem like you seem pretty confident right now that mertz at least has a shot to, oh yeah i, I think, to, to catch him i i i think there's a good shot that it's you know it's jack graham danny and chase like that'd be where i could see that that four playing out and you know graham's gonna get to play there this isn't a situation where jack cohen has just this ton of experience that yeah like alex like overwhelming amount of experience and he's out there and you know he doesn't have it and so there's not that big of a gap in terms of what jack is you know knows and what graham knows there's there's five games of last year actually truly playing so i I just don't see the gap as big as it you know it would normally be with a junior and a guy you know who should still be in high school yeah i think the the experience gap quote unquote is is more about you know, Cohen having been in the offense for two years, yep. then the five games he started last year. Sure. Um, so I, I think if I think if Burtz can get can continue to get the get the playbook down more, and by the fall if he's more clicking on all cylinders with with knowing what to do and not like you said not having to need a, a coach or or Jack Cohen to to kind of tell him coming out of the huddle during a scrimmage what's you know what exactly is going on, then I think that he's got a lot better chance than than maybe he looks right now. Can we agree that he's gotten more ups of, than any of the? other true freshmen that have ever come in oh i i think so yeah, i mean i, I haven't far. covered the team that as long as you have but um i i mean yeah i i i mean usually they come in and i mean early enrollees just don't really get that many reps right, right? <laughs> yeah i mean it, way down you know alex got got a few reps and but it was way it was at way after joel way after bart like it was way down the line and you know even you know jack was barely getting any reps two years ago so i mean it it's different and he's different and we don't know what he's going to be. We don't know what grammar is going to be, but from just the very small sample size, we we know that the talent is there. And I, I think it's just a matter of time before he does end up being the starter, whether it's at the beginning of the season, I don't know, but I think it's just a matter of time. I will say even, even for spring, it is odd to have four quarterbacks getting legitimate reps. I I think that this is probably the deepest, I don't know if you would agree, this is probably the deepest quarterback that room they've had in a long time. I think that um, whoever ends up being the fourth, you know, third and fourth quarterback or probably better than your, the the third and fourth quarterbacks they typically have. Would you, would you maybe agree with that? Didn't didn't we were joking the other day? They're they're going to have the (laughs) best fourth quarter, uh, fourth, fourth uh, quarterback in the country, country, (laughs) whoever, whoever ends up being, um, yeah, and, and Joe Rudolph said as much when we had a chance to talk to him today. He said he he thinks anybody, any of those four guys, should walk into the huddle right now, and people feel comfortable and feel good about their chances to succeed. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true or not, but <laughs> um, they all they all have they all 
had the ability to, to go out and play. But again, it's just it's so diff- difficult in, in practice to judge, you know, whether it's them playing well or it's defense playing horribly, yeah. and, and that's uh, that's always the, the struggle you have. But uh, arm talent wise. It's as good as it's been in, in quite some time. Yeah, it is always difficult in spring ball sometimes to evaluate things when, you know, it's just spring ball. But right. I, I think if I had to make an early prediction, I would say that I would still say that Jack Cohn starts, but I think that Mertz would be last year's Jack Cohn, where and Vandenboom would be last year's Vandenboom. <laughs> <laughs> so basically Mertz would I if I had to predict Mertz would be your number two quarterback, but they would still try to redshirt him would be would be my so I, you, know, right you mean in terms of playing those four games and yeah, yeah. playing no more than four games. So well, see, no, basically, Mertz is the number two quarterback. Does does not play garbage time. It's the thing. It's the thing. It's, it was the thing with Alex Hornibrick and, and Bart Houston. If they're even, you're going to go with the older guy to start off. I mean, I I thought that Alex and Bart were pretty even coming out of fall camp that year. Yeah. Um, the thing I'm anxious to see or interested to see is, and another thing that John Bodmeyer talked about was, um. He was asked, can you give reps? You asked him, I think. Can you give these guys these same kind of reps in fall camp? Or can you give four guys Can you give the legitimate four reps, guys legitimate yeah. reps or similar reps to what they're getting now? And he said, no, like yeah. you can't. So um, it'll be fascinating to see who is, when, when we get to fall camp, who is that second quarterback? Is it Graham Mertz or is it Danny Vandenboom? And less likely Chase Wolf. Like, who's it going to be? And if, and if it's Graham Mertz, then... I think there's a shot that he, as I said all along, I think he's got a sh- shot at winning it. But yeah, I think the first day of fall camp, this will become a little bit more clear. Yeah, and assuming when, we get to see it. When you get to the <laughs> true, well, when you get to that point, um, they're going to have to show their hand as a they prepare bit. for the season, at least a little bit more than they are now. Right. Not not even just if it's Jack. You know, it's you're going to have to cut down the reps. Can't can't do what they're doing right now. Yeah. I thought Joe Rudolph had some interesting comments on the offensive line today. Um, you know, I, I asked him if, you know, Logan Bruss has been working at guard before he got injured uh, last week. And uh, he said he could still play tackle. He was going to switch him back and forth. Uh, but he also mentioned David Mormon is having like the best spring of anybody. And he yeah. said he's a senior that, you know, that just really wants it. Um, I feel like, you know, I feel like I came in a spring thinking I knew kind of how the first team line would, would kind of line up. And now I'm really have no idea. I, I don't know if, if Mormon is, is actually going to be your first team right tackle or if, if Bruss, you know, and if that's the case, you know, who sits, who, you know, who's not in between Urban Lyles and, and Bruss at guard. Um, can, what do you kind of make of the offensive line right now? And again, a lot of guys have been out, so that's been difficult to, to make, make a lot out of as well. Yeah. Uh, well, it was the, the Mormon thing. I, Stood out because I mean he yeah. he's he's been at left tackle he's been in the, essentially in Cole Van Landen's spot all spring and then today we see him switch over to the right side and he's yeah. he playing right tackle and they move uh, Beach Tyler Beach over to left tackle I think and we all thought throughout the off season that it was going to be Logan Bruss at right tackle and then we open fall camp and he's at right guard um, I still think it's going to be Logan Bruss at right tackle like I, I still yeah. feel like because. Had he not gotten hurt, he would have been bumped back out here, out there for these last few practices. That's what, you know, Joe said he was going to get him some guard rep, reps of guard now at right tackle. I think Dave Mormon's of a, a, a great swing, whether it's so right he could play tack- guard as well, right? Yeah. But like he'd be your swing tackle, like yeah. he can play right tackle and play left tackle. He spent a ton of time at guard. He could be your guy that could fill in. He could be your number six anywhere you needed him to be. He could he could fill in. That's I think that's significant. If he ends up starting. He ends up starting, and then you all of a sudden, then you can bring if Bruss isn't your starting right guard. Well, then he's your he's your right tackle, and you can you can use him. And same thing with Tyler Beach. There, in you know, when I even mentioned Logan Brown, who could you know potentially uh, step in and play, you know, maybe get in the two deep right away. But they have they have a lot of flexibility at, at tackle, I think, and that's saying something considering the guys that they've lost here these last few years david edwards and you didn't have patrick castle i think they were expecting to be yeah. their long-term solution at right tackle after david edwards so um it's an interesting group and i i, I thought the most interesting part of what joel joe was talking about was we, we we all expect them just to be really good and potentially be at the same level of what they were last year and he's like i don't know if they they can be i don't know it's still early it's still early early to they have, they have a lot of question marks a lot of good question marks is what yeah. he said but they have question marks and um, I thought that was interesting. He's he, he sounds confident, but he also isn't totally sure just yet. Yeah, I, I think it's really like it's really valuable to have a guy that can play 
almost every position like Mormon potentially can. Because you get your um, best and, five on. I know, and if even if even if Biotic went down, you have a couple guys who are going to be a guard, Lyles or Erdman, that can move to center, and then you can slot Mormon in at guard as well. So I mean, I think that's that's one of the things Rudolph has always wanted to try to do is just to get his best five guys on the field, and we yeah. saw it when Dieter moved to tackle a couple of years ago. So I, I think that's. It's going to be fascinating to see how that right tackle spot plays out because it, I mean, you know, I think before spring it looked like it was probably going to be Bruss and like, well, can Logan Brown potentially come in and challenge him? But now if you have the option of, of potentially Mormon challenging Bruss and then Logan Brown coming in, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And look, Rudolph did not, um, he was asked about Logan Brown today and he did not dismiss him being able to work his way in the two deep and, and compete. So right. uh, that's something to keep an eye on as well. It is. And, uh, again, I I think they'll be better at right tackle this year than they were last year, simply because David Edwards was just never healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that was, that's come true. And I don't know if you've looked at any of these mock drafts, but there are some mock drafts that have, uh, the, the from The Athletic, had him in the seventh round, David Edwards. David Edwards, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the way down the seventh Can you imagine? I mean, wow. he was a second round. Like They had a second round grade coming out of 2017, stayed – and he fell off the face, and and so, but either way, I think they're going to be better at right tackle. Not, I'm not. This is not a shot at David Edwards. This is just a shot at his, you know, his injury. It just never let him play at the level that we saw in 2017. So, I think they'll be better at right tackle. I think they're going to be better at left tackle than they were last year. So you have those two spots. Uh, Tyler Biotis is going to be a better center, and it's the ability. It's you know the two guards. Can they? Whoever it is, can they live up to what what Dieter and, and Benchall did last year? It's going to be tough. Um, but that, to me, that's the key. That's a good point because you, you think about everything they lost on the offensive line, but when you but in reality, they didn't lose, you know, the David Edwards that we know, you know, the David Edwards from two years ago. We lost, you know, David Edwards that was playing injured all year. So when you look at the right tackle spot, I guess it's really probably not going to drop off from what we saw last year. I don't so that's think so at all. That's uh, that's really interesting too. And I think I think Van Landen's going to be uh, a star this year. So yeah. I, I think they have a good chance to still be good on the line like you said if, if those guards can come through and you know um maybe in certain spots they you know i i think coming in too i, I thought maybe they were a little short on depth but if like like we mentioned earlier if they have a, a guy that can like mormon who can play all the positions um that that, that really helps as well yeah um what kind of this is kind of an open question but what what has kind of stood out to you most on defense um so far i mean you we have like you know we have the outside linebacker spot that's kind of open right now that noah burks has been taking most of the first team reps at we have a lot of cornerbacks switching in and out. Um, is there anything in particular that maybe stands out more than, you know, more than others to you? Maybe it's the offense. Maybe it's the quarterbacks. But I feel like there's been a lot of, a lot of getting hands on balls. You know, uh, whether whether it's Leo Chanel or whether it's, you know, uh, Scott Nelson or whether it's Eric Burrell or today Caesar Williams. You know, Caesar Williams had a had a pick in the, in the scrimmage on Saturday too. It feels like, and this was the same kind of feel we got last fall in fall camp. It didn't carry over to the regular season but um and I thought that was a huge thing coming into spring was can guys get their hands on the ball and can they make plays because they just did not make enough plays last year yeah. defensively um and that's why I think there's a, a large reason why they struggled um to to live up to what they had been in previous years and that's probably unfair because how great they were you know in the five previous years defensively but their inability to, to cause turnovers their inability to get the ball you know back to their offense was a huge huge problem and uh, we've seen a ton of playmaking and I think it's come from all different levels. You know, we, we've, yeah. uh, you know, the inside linebackers have made plays. The outside linebackers have made some plays. The safeties have picked off passes. The corners um, have made plays. They've also given up some big plays, but they've yeah. also made a bunch of plays too. And um, I just, I, I, I think that has to be encouraging. And if it's, they can somehow make that into a regular thing and make that into a regular season thing, it could be a game changer, obviously. I, I think Leonard sort of foreshadowed the lack of interceptions last year uh, coming out of fall camp he basically said these uh, we still need to become better playmakers and the, right the, but the, the safeties corners. the safeties were making plays last year in, in fall camp i thought and yeah and it did not carry over that's true and i think it's gonna be interesting to see if they can i, I think part of the problem last year as well was that they didn't get a consistent pass rush that yep. probably didn't help either do you think that it's hard to tell watching spring practice you know five times but do you think that they have an opportunity to to get a better pass rush this year, even without Van Ginkle, they better. <laughs> well, and Van Ginkle was never healthy, right? I mean, he was healthy for about two games, three games the entire yeah. season. Uh, and when he was healthy, he was a, a difference maker. 
Um, Zach Bond apparently was not fully healthy all year. Little things bothering him. But that's that's football, right? I mean, that's yeah. just, that's just what's going to happen. Uh, and so I don't know what what you expect from uh, um, what to expect from those guys this year. But I do know getting Garrett Ram back is going to be huge. And he was back in pads. He didn't do anything today, but he was back in pads for the first time. And uh, a healthy Isaiah, Isaiah Latimer. Get those two guys back on your defensive line. I think they can be disruptors up front, and that should help everybody else. But you need, you do need, you need Zach Bond to step up. You need Noah Burks to step up. You need Jalen Franklin, who we've seen, you know, had, had a sack in the scrimmage the other day. Um, and then the other guy who, who's gotten some first team reps is Isaiah, Isaiah Green May. Yeah. And, um, He's a he's a long long dude. Um, he's a little bit light it seems, but he, yeah. he's a long dude. And uh, so those would be the guys. And then Spencer Lytle too. Like they need their ins- outside linebackers to, in this defense. You desperately need your outside linebackers to be guys that can get after the quarterback. And it just didn't happen consistently enough, injuries or otherwise, last year um, that it had happened in previous years. And when you lose talent like Leon Jacobs and Garrett Dooley and T.J. Watt and Vince Beagle and Joe Schobert you come to expect that they're just going to throw another guy in there and it's going to be what it was before, and it was not last year. I think that's the biggest question for this defense is what are they going to get at that second outside linebacker spot opposite Bond. And, you know, it's we haven't seen much yet from from those guys through five practices, but, I mean, I, I don't I don't know if Noah Burks or Isaiah Green May or Jalen Franklin's the answer, but we're going to have to find out come fall camp if, if they – and I, I do think that if you can have, like you mentioned, if you can have Laudermilk and Rand – um, healthy that, yeah. that that helps those guys so much, and that's that's part of the that's part of what ha- that's part of what happened last year is that it, it puts a lot more pressure on those outside linebackers when if you have you know say Henningsen and Lyles playing a defensive end guys oh. who just aren't pass rushers. They're not um, pass they're not pass rushers, and they're young. Like yeah. they were they were playing for the first time, and Lyles been on defense for three months. You know, like it was yeah it was a problem because they they were that low on bodies on the defensive line. And, I think they're going to have a little bit more depth, whether it's, you know, you know, Henningsen is that defensive end, and then you have Isaiah Mullins coming in, David Pfaff, obviously a senior, and, um, you know, Bryson Williams another year, like all these guys. And they're going to play, I, I, you know, they play out of sub package, so it's going to be Rand and Loudermilk and potentially in the nickel and a bunch of other, you know, you could throw a bunch of different guys in there. But having those two guys healthy is a, would be a difference maker, would be a game – I used Game Changer before. I don't know if it would be a Game Changer. It would be a difference maker having yeah. those two guys inside. All right, thanks for joining me, Zach. Yeah, you appreciate can fo- it. You can follow him on Twitter at Zach Heilprin. Uh You want to plug anything else? No, I'm good. Or... I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right, well, uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well at Jason underscore Galloway. And uh, su- subscribe to The Red Zone on iTunes or Google Play if you have not already. Give us a rating and a review if it's five star. If it's not five star, don't worry about <laughs> please, it. <laughs> or please don't click. Yeah. Uh, and of course, keep visiting madison.com for all of your Badgers football news. Thanks for listening.